Uh, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is David Smolker and I'm part of the marketing team that is working uh, for a better Revit. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a big agenda today and we want to leave time to address your questions. So I'm going to dive right in, get you oriented to our webinar platform here, and then we're going to get right into the highlights of this new and exciting Revit release. First things first, a moment of safe harbor. In today's presentation, we may make statements regarding future events and development efforts for our products and services. Please take a moment to read and take in our safe harbor statement. I'll just give you a minute to review there. And now diving into the logistics for today. So this is a Zoom webinar, as you all, I sure know at this point. Um, a couple of logistics as we get yourself oriented. Uh, your audio settings are by default set to computer audio. If you'd like to join over the phone, you can select use telephone after joining and call in using the numbers available. Um, we have Revit product experts standing by to answer your questions. So please add them in the Q&A section of your control panel and we'll, we will address them as we go, hopefully saving time at the end to put a few to our panelists. Uh, and then a final note, we will be recording this webinar and you'll receive a copy of it over email after we conclude for watching at your leisure. I want to tell you a little bit about our our series, the AEC Essentials, uh, I'm sorry, the AEC Collection Essentials webinar series. We started this last year as a way of highlighting multi-product workflows in the AEC Collection. Um, and, and it is a series where we look at capabilities made possible with the AEC Collection. So the AEC Collection provides designers, engineers, and contractors a set of BIM and CAD tools that support projects from early stage design through to construction. With the collection, you can create with these, explore what's possible, and build with confidence. I encourage you to check out other webinars in this series and to learn more about workflows like conceptual design, bridge design, generative design, MEP engineering, model coordination, and more. Uh, to do that, go to www.autodesk.com slash AEC slash webinars to see other presentations on the calendar or to stream those that we've already completed. You can go ahead and take a screenshot here on this slide and, and you've got that address right there for you. So now let's talk about you. Uh, first, we want to thank you for joining us today. and We want to get a better sense of why you're here and your experience with Revit. So I'm going to launch a few quick polling questions, starting with how often are you using Revit to work? So go ahead and key in your responses here. Oh, we've got some everyday users. Fantastic. Uh, still got some folks haven't used Revit before. So this will be a nice introduction to some of the capabilities that um, are, are new and advanced in Revit. Let's see. So about 70% of you are, are using it every day. Uh, Revit warriors, we like to call them. Uh, and then, you know, some of you using it frequently, some on occasion. Um, but wow, we've got an experienced group of Revit users. So you need to keep those questioners, uh, I'm sorry, those uh, question answerers on the toes. So let's go to the next polling question, please. Okay, so what version of Revit are uh, the most in your, in your work? So it looks like we've got a pretty even split between Revit 2020 and Revit 2021. A few of you are on older versions, but Revit 2020 seems to be the, the latest and greatest for many of you. Uh, well, we're excited to show you how we've advanced in the last couple of releases. Let's go to the next polling question. Finally, are you excited for Revit 2022? Have you heard about it? Have you read the blog post on the Revit blog? Have you heard, uh, maybe been to a user group session where um, we've, we've started to show some of those features? Have you been to our YouTube channel? And good, we're seeing some, some enthusiasm here. And I, we're also seeing some folks who are not sure. So that's great. So this will be a great introduction to Revit uh, 2022. Um, and again, we thank you all for coming. We thank you all for joining us. And uh, yeah, thanks for taking part in our polls. Can move to the next slide, please. 
So now I'm very pleased to introduce our presenters for today. We have an all-star team of some of Autodesk's best technical marketers, Philippe Bonneau, Cesar Escalante, Tomas Fudala, and Brandon White. These gentlemen will guide you through some highlighted features in conversation with our master of ceremonies, the talented one and only Aaron Vorwerk. We also have product experts on the line to, to take your questions in the question and answer panel. We have Scott D. Davis, Harlan Brum, Sasha Crotty, Ali Atebe, Sam Galloway, Kimberly Furman, and Mark Gibbons. So we've got a talented bench here to take your questions, a very knowledgeable bench. Uh, so please go ahead and use that Q&A feature. Finally, our team of experts is going to share with you the highlights of Revit 2022, focusing on the key themes of design productivity, interoperability, and documentation efficiency. It should be a great program, and with that, I'll bring in my colleague Aaron Vorwerk to guide us through it. Aaron, great to see you. Take it away. Thanks, David. Thanks for teeing that up for us. Revit 2022 at a glance. This is a big release. Uh, we been talking about it as though it's a big release, but even by the numbers, a big release. So a huge number of features, as you've probably already seen if you've been following the blog posts or YouTube videos, um, a release that's really targeted at what users have asked for. So 8,200 plus votes on Revit ideas being addressed. It's a pretty big number. A lot of bug fixes and other things happening under the hood as well, of course, as always happens with Revit. But to show you a little bit about the release at a glance before we get in uh, to the details, we kind of grouped these, there's so many features here that are platform features that are just supporting everybody, that we've kind of grouped them in the themes as David already mentioned. You know, 40 plus features here listed for design productivity, uh, including a few for generative design and the people flow toolkit that came out between Revit 2021.1 and now, um, and are now baked into the product but a big, you know, big list. And then similarly for another 40 plus features that are looking at interoperability, documentation efficiency, and, and then a sort of a developer tools section, APIs, Dynamo, et cetera. Lots there. So we'll jump in quickly. This is design productivity. And to kick things off, uh, I'd like to start with wall enhancements. I'll ask my colleague and fellow architect Cesar Escalante to take the stage and tell us about walls. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Last year, we introduced slanted walls. These are enhanced in Revit 2022, as we can now edit the profile of slanted walls. But the big news this year is the introduction of taper walls. Let's see this feature in, in action. A new taper wall option is now available in Revit 2022. To get started, enable one of the wall assemble layers to display a variable thickness. This is going to expose the cross-section type parameters where you can define the slope angle of the interior and exterior surface of a wall. In the wall instance parameters, you can change any wall's cross-section parameter to taper. You can update the slope and angles using instance overrides or the wall's temporary dimensions. Align wall hosted components to the slope interior or exterior face of the wall. Taper walls will display clean joins at corner conditions. You can also modify the sketch boundaries of a slanted wall along its work plane. This will give you greater control over the displays of of your wall geometry. Enjoy improved wall modeling with the taper and slant wall enhancements. That feature will be great for both architects and engineers. Thanks, Cesar. Next, next up is a set of RPC enhancements. Tell us about those. Yeah, there are several new improved features in RPCs in Revit 2022. Let me show you another video. Revit now supports the new RPC 2.0 file format, which display complex high resolution geometry, physical based materials and lighting, and more intelligent ways of control the asset parameters. You can now experience the improved performance of realistic views with options to switch off all the RPCs in the model or display the orientation in billboard mode towards the camera. 
Additional features include a simplified representations of RPCs in non-render views, support for the furniture category in the family editor, and an expanded library of rendering assets, including people, transportation, and furniture. Bottom line, you can create better for realistic renderings with the RPC enhancements in this year's release. Yeah, those RPCs do look pretty amazing. Um, onto the topic of generative design, what have you got for us here? Well, we have a number of enhancements here. New and updated Autodesk sample study types are included as part of the out-of-the-box version. They allow you to to create sample layouts for interage and lay down objects on grids. You also have a new option for saving default settings. You can use drop-down nodes as study inputs. You can specify constant values to be added for all the outcomes of the study, regardless of the generation method selected. You can also store study types in multiple folders, including local folders and map network drives add more folders to a list using a simple user interface. In a nutshell, you can make more informed design decisions faster with generative design this year. It's great to see those generative design features. I mean, they first were introduced last year in Revit 2021, but they're becoming more mature. Um, on a similar note, the path of travel features have seen some development. Tell us what's happening there. Yeah, in Revit 2022, the People Flow Toolkit technology preview, which was introduced last fall, has been officially incorporated into Revit. There are four new tools that are provided under the Route Analysis tab so that customers could automate, visualize, analyze the routes within a model to understand the impacts of physical distance in the floor plan. With these tools, you can do four things. You can generate multiple paths of travel options between points. You can also schedule them. You can indicate the direction of the path of travel with one-way indicators, families. These are annotation categories nested within the door families if needed. You can place people content to represent occupants and built-in buffers. These buffers are recognized as clearances during the route analysis. And you can also overlay spatial grids and rooms to visually aid in the distribution of elements and meet prescribed physical separation requirements. You can control these four new tools through the options, user interface, route analysis tools, and automate the distance and physical separation requirement routes in this new version of Revit. Thanks, Cesar. Uh, we're off to a good start here. Uh, next, I'd like to change things up. Mechanical engineers, some love. Uh, for this part, I'll ask my colleague and resident MEP expert, Brandon White, to tell us about MEP design to fabrication. Hello, everyone. Revit 2022 offers improvements to fabrication modeling and conversion from the design intent. Let's watch a video to learn more. In previous releases of Revit, justified transitions and non-centered taps would be removed in the conversion of design intent elements to fabrication parts. With Revit 2022, these fabrication parts are correctly placed in the same location as the design intent elements when using the design to fabrication. This tool has been optimized to support branch offsets, justifications, and equipment mapping without the dependency of design lines. On the MEP fabrication part browser, group has been renamed to palette. Performance has been improved when reloading configurations. Quick connect lets you fill a gap between a fitting and another straight section. Dragging end connectors on straight sections in a fabrication layout will auto fill connections regardless of size. The route and fill tool can be used to add parts between two open connectors quickly and easily. One or more solutions will be suggested depending on the service. These improvements make design to fabrication tool faster, more accurate, and more efficient in Revit 2022. That was great to see. I mean, Revit continues to expand workflows further downstream. 
Uh, now, while we're focusing on MEP, tell us about systems analysis updates. Sure, Aaron. Revit systems analysis has added a new feature that allows users to get more detailed outputs related to loads and psychrometric reports from within Revit. This new feature lets you view floor plans, 3D view, explore results in the new report and examine the systems analysis schematic all on a single screen. After running a simulation on a systems analysis model, view the summary information for QA QC checks on multiple unit systems. Reports show a breakdown of load components, totals for sizing and equipment, psychrometric chart and detailed psychrometric state point properties in printable formats. The workflows for exporting G GBXML have been consolidated into a new dialog. Systems analysis now offers streamlined GBXML exporting, viewing of the energy analytical model in Revit, and a brand new UI for load and sizing reports. Uh, thank you, Brandon. Uh, I know we also have some structural features in this release. Uh, let me ask my colleague and fellow structural engineer, Tomas Budala, for concrete and detailing. Sure, Aaron. Um, for structural engineers and detailers, um, Revit 2022 improves modeling and rebar detailing. In this release, you will find several rebar enhancements. You can place uh, rebars of exact dimensions with just two clicks. You can move or remove individual bars in rebar sets. You can model bars using the real diameters, including the ribs. You can also assign shape codes to custom bent freeform bars, enabling you to um, provide better fabrication instructions. And finally, settings used during rebar placement are now maintained for the duration of the Revit session. So there is no longer a need to reapply rebar settings for each set. Now let's see some of these enhancements in action. Revit 2022 improves modeling and rebar detailing, making it even easier for you to move from CAD and disconnected tools into a BIM workflows and to model and detail faster and more accurately. You can now move or remove individual bars in the rebar sets, area or pad reinforcement systems to avoid clashes with other rebars, openings or other elements while the rebar set and area and path system logic is maintained. There is no need to split into multiple sets or to path and area system, a process that in the past was very time consuming and complicated. Another great enhancement is a new method for rebar placement. You are now able to place rebars of exact dimensions aligned to any reference in the project with just two clicks. This feature is huge for rebar modeling and it is a real game changer for rebar detailers who work in Revit. This new method of placing rebars improves their software ease of use and users' productivity while modeling reinforced concrete details, both cast in place and precast. You can now model rebounds using the real bar diameter, including the ribs. So now you can avoid clashes, especially in concrete elements with many large diameter bars. Now rebar constraints distances to the concrete cover, bar geometry and segment lengths are computed using the model bar diameter parameter. This new feature improves user efficiency in modeling accurate reinforcement. These and many other enhancements for rebar detailing that can be found in Revit 2022 make modeling and documenting reinforced concrete structures in Revit faster and more accurate. That was a pretty impressive list of features for rebar. Um, what other updates for design productivity stick out to you, Tomas? Um, this release offers an improved parameter identification UI. This is important because you can 
now use filters to quickly find available parameters when you create schedules and working with project parameters. When you create a schedule, the Fields tab in the Schedule Properties dialog includes a filter section. You can filter the available parameters based on the following criteria. Parameter name, parameter type, discipline, value, type or instance. You can use the parameter name filtering criteria as a search tool. As you type in the parameter name search field, um, the list is actively filtered. When filtering a schedule, the filter only affects the available fields. Uh, fields uh, selected for use in the schedule are not affected by the filter. You can also use information in the tooltips to help identify the correct parameter to work with. Tooltips um, display parameter name, parameter type, data type, and description if, it, if it's provided. The filtering tool also appears in the project um, parameters dialog. 2022 enables you to easily filter and identify the types and characteristics of parameters being used in your projects, helping you manage them more accurately and efficiently. Yeah, that was a good one. Thank you, Tomek. Uh, I don't want to date myself by, by saying when I last used Revit in practice, but, but uh, man, some of these features would be helpful. Uh, we talked about concrete a couple of minutes ago, but we have a pretty neat improvement here for steel connections. I'll ask my colleague, Philippe Bonneau, our expert in steel detailing and fabrication, to tell us a little bit more about that. Philippe? Thank you, Aaron. So in Revit 2022, structural engineers can automate the placement of steel connections following custom sizing rules by predefining connection libraries and associating connection types with profile size ranges applicable to them. So the first step for you is to create a library of steel connections. In this library, you can add a variety of connection types and specify ranges where they will be applicable. And these ranges of applicability can be based on your local practices and standards. And they are intended to help you save time when placing simple steel connections. Once you have configured your library, you can open your Revit project and begin using your predefined rules with Dynamo Player to place steel connections automatically. Single plate connections, shear end plate connections, but also clip angles, base plate, column splices, and many other steel connections that are typically pre-designed and standardized can be placed faster and more accurately using this approach. Revit 2022 helps structural engineers place steel connections quickly and accurately using automated tools and predefined ranges of applicability for profile sizes. Thank you, Philippe. Okay, we've highlighted many features of Revit 2022 for design productivity, but it's time to move on. Remember, for complete details, please visit the Revit blog and product help. We'll share links again later. Revit 2022 offers several new features to support workflows between Autodesk products as well as between Revit and third-party tools. Brandon, welcome back to the stage. Tell us about Revit 2022 and PDFs. I know this was a highly requested feature. Sure. And thanks. Um, Revit 2022 offers a native configurable PDF exporter. So let's take a look at the video. Um, the 2D PDF export feature improves documentation efficiency. The PDF export dialog offers similar options to the print dialog, such as the ability to export the visible portion of the view or, to, or a user-defined selection of views and sheets. PDF naming rules may be set up within the export setup section of the dialog. You can use this feature to generate PDF file names automatically based on your project or shared name parameters. You can also choose to have the exporter detect output size and orientation automatically. 
from the selected view, views and sheets. The native PDF exporter in Revit 2022 fulfills, fulfills a long lasting, long standing request, helping you generate PDFs quickly and efficiently. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, yeah, I know that one has been out there for a while. Uh, now I'll ask uh, Cesar to return to the stage. Uh, Cesar, tell us about Revit 2022 and Rhino. Happy to do that. Actually, I have a video for that as well. In this year, we enable linking McNeil Rhino serif files in Revit. Changes to the Rhino files are immediately updated in Revit by reloading the link or reopening the project. Additionally, you can host your conceptual Rhino file in Autodesk Docs and ensure all the stakeholders have access to the latest and greatest design information. With this ability of linking Rhino files, you can accelerate your project documentation. We're very excited about this feature. Yeah, that sure makes it easy to use concept work from Rhino. Now, now what if I'm a format user, completely different uh, user type maybe? Tell us what's happening to Informant Pro. Yeah, of course, we're seeing big changes happening here with the introduction of, of a new workflow. I've got a video for you as well. This year, we introduced an expanded functionality that better integrates Revit and Formit Pro. You can now translate Revit elements seamlessly into a Formit Pro session using the new tree to sketch functionality. With this, you can continue exploring and tweaking your design using the fluid, intuitive modeling capabilities of Formit. You can apply materials and send Formit geometry directly into Revit. Formit materials are preserved seamlessly as Revit materials. Using visibility graphics, you can control the display of Formit layers. With this, you can improve your conceptual design workflows with this seamless integration with Formit Pro. That's pretty cool. It feels like the software is responding to the way designers work instead of forcing them to adopt uh, new behaviors. Now, uh, we've talked about specific tools like Rhino and Formit, but what about IFC? I know we've been working on this. That's right, Aaron. We achieve IFC for reference view certification for architecture and structure exports. The IFC property set definition and the associated Revit shared parameters definitions have been updated with the latest IFC 4 PSDS version 4.0.2.2. We have significantly improved the performance of linking some IFC files containing elements with many parameters. And we have added the ability for IFC exporter to pick up information about site location regarding geo-coordinate references in EPSG code format. Autodesk is the first software vendor to support IFC4 exports for both architecture and structure, and we're very excited about achieving this goal. Yeah, thank you, Cesar. I know we've got more cooking with respect to IFC and interoperability too. Uh, I'll just mention one additional update here for the audience. You know, with the launches of Revit 2022 and Inventor 2022, we can now export Inventor models to RVT format. Um, this is awesome for building product manufacturers and consumers of that content as it creates a round trip workflow where we can link RVT files um, from Inventor directly into Revit, of course, and then the Inventor user can link RVT files into Inventor that, that was introduced in Inventor 2021. So the whole team stays in sync. It's really a powerful um, convergence related workflow. Okay, we just covered some great enhancements to support interoperability. As you can see, we're not covering everything today. We're just kind of hitting the highlight. Next up is documentation efficiency, another major area of focus for Revit 2022. Let's kick this section off with a few schedule enhancements. Uh, Tomas, what can you tell us about these features? Okay, and this really is, you will find several schedule enhancements. Um, in the Revit 2022 shared instance, uh, 
parameters associated with categories now appear as available fields when creating a key schedule for that category. We will come back to this in a minute uh, to cover more details. You can also now filter by family and type parameters in schedule and material takeoffs. This improves family filtering in a single or multi-category schedules. Revit 2022 also introduces split and place functionality for schedules, enabling users to split schedules and specify destination sheets for each of their segments. Prior to this release, these segments were not able to be placed on separate sheets. Now let's see the shared parameters in key schedules feature in action. So let's play a video on this. Okay, um, shared instance parameters associated with categories now, now appear as available fields when creating a key schedule for that category. The key schedule filters uh, compatible parameters that might be included. You can also add shared parameters to the category when you create a key schedule. The use of shared parameters in key schedules makes it possible for a key schedule to drive geometry or control visibility in families. When a key is applied to an element, properties assigned, to, assigned by the key become read-only in the properties palette, and Revit indicates the status along with the tooltip for each parameter in the key schedule. Parameter values derived from the key value display an equal symbol to the right of the value. Use shared parameters in families and then include the shared parameters in a key schedule to control family geometry using the key schedule. This new feature and the other enhancements we saw on the last slide give you better control over the filtering and display of schedules in your Revit project, helping you work more productively and efficiently. I like that. Uh, the ability to use shared parameters and key schedules enables some powerful workflows. Uh, yeah. Next up is a simple but welcome change to color fill schemes. Tell us. Yes. Uh, in Revit 2022, a new default uh, pastel color scheme has been added. Uh, previously, the default color scheme used darker, bolder colors, which could obscure uh, other elements in the view. Uh, the scheme has been updated to use lighter pastel colors to alleviate this issue. This feature enables users to achieve better results using color fill schemes without the need for manual color adjustments, thus improving their productivity. Thank you, Tomas. Uh, back to schedules for a minute. Uh, Brandon, will you update us on work sets in schedules? Yes, happy to. Uh, Revit 2022 enables work sets to be scheduled. You can now add a work set parameter when creating a scheduled work shared model. The work set parameter is also available when creating material takeoffs, view lists, sheet lists, and title blocks. This feature enables you to filter and format schedules and lists based on work sets. That's great. Uh, uh, next, tell us about situations where you have multiple elements uh, with varying parameters. Yes, in Revit 2022, you can, all, you can control the display of properties when multiple elements having different parameter values for those properties are selected, scheduled, and tagged. When you select multiple elements, any, any properties that they share are reported. In past releases, if parameter values for the properties shared by the selected elements were the same, that value was reported. However, if the values differed, no value was shown. Now, when multiple elements are selected and those parameter values differ, they report either as varies or as user-defined custom text string. This behavior is consistent in the properties palette, schedules, and tags. This feature reduces confusion and improves productivity by enabling, 
by enabling you to quickly identify varying parameter values for selected element properties. Yeah, that's a nice improvement. I mean, it's just a, a bunch of things here that are really good on the documentation side. I, I know there's another really nice feature here around call-out views. Uh, that's right. In Revit 2022, you can preserve callouts when deleting parent views. The callout view may be switched between the parent view and all intersecting views. The callout views can be hidden by the hide scales coarser than setting from the properties palette. Setting the parent view to none will make the callout independent for the parent view. Callouts without, callouts without a parent view are visible in intersecting views. Dependent callout views are preserved when the parent view is deleted. You are to make callout views independent or delete the callout view. That last one is, uh, yeah, particularly uh, awesome for me. Anyway, there are, there are many features here I wish I'd have had when I was in practice. I'll ask you to cover one more. Tell me about tagging linked elements. Yeah, sure thing, Aaron. Revit 2022 improves the behavior of tags in host models that reference elements in linked models. Tags in host model in the host model that attach to elements in a linked model will now remember the linked element ID. If a linked file is unloaded or out of date, the tag may be orphaned. However, when the linked file is reloaded, the tag will now reattach to the linked element automatically. This feature improves productivity for linked model annotation workflows. Thank you, Brandon. Great stuff. Um, okay, I'll, I'll welcome back Cesar to tell us about enhancements to revisions. Thanks, Aaron. This year, uh, you can create custom revision numbering sequences in your project to support multiple deliverable packages. This was a long standing request. Now you can specify the minimum number of digits to maintain a standardized length in alignment with ISO 19650 or other local or regional standards. You can use a custom prefix or suffix to denote a project phase. You can customize the sequence characters to meet your project needs. You can also share revision number in sequences between projects using the transfer project standards. I'm very excited about this feature you can improve your revision documentation with this flexible revision number and sequences. Yeah, that's a welcome improvement. Uh, next are improvements to uh, annotations for ramps. Tell us about those. Sure. You can add now spot slope labels and spot elevation mark on ramp surfaces in plan elevation sections and locked 3D views. And you can adjust the annotation type parameters to meet your slope representation standards. We can achieve better documentation of our ramps using this ability of annotating spot slopes and elevations. Yeah, that's nice. That, that makes ramps more consistent with stairs and things. Thank you, Cesar. Uh, we're moving quickly through this list. I'll, I'll invite Philippe back to the stage to help us run through just a few more. Uh, Philippe? Please tell us about tag improvements. Yes, and let's start with uh, rotating tags. So when you rotate a tag in Revit, you might like to control the angle value, value precisely. And the new angle parameter for tags uh, found in the properties palette makes it easier to control the display angle of a rotating tag. And if you rotate the tag with a rotate command, the angle value is automatically calculated but you can enter a specific value afterwards if you like. Multi-leader tags. In Revit 2022, you may now apply a single tag to multiple elements and even indicate the total quantity if you like. So once a tag has been placed in the model, you can add or remove leaders to similar host elements at any time by selecting the tag and using the add remove host option available in the contextual tab on the ribbon. Tag curtain wall millions, Revit 2022 enables tags to be applied to curtain wall millions. 
So you can navigate to the loaded tags and symbols dialog uh, to view the current list of tags and symbols assigned to the family categories. And you will see that there is a new category which has been added for curtain wall millions. So you can load the default tag, uh, which is uh, provided with Revit 2022, or you can create your own one and tag uh, curtain wall million. So all these features improve documentation workflows uh, in Revit 2022. Thank you for covering those, Philippe. Uh, now, what about the display of grids? Yeah, sure. In uh, Revit 2022, uh, you can choose to display grid lines in your 3D views. And let's see a video overview of this feature. So if you go to the Show Grids parameter uh, available in the Properties palette, you can access a list of levels for your project and select the levels for which you want grid lines to display. And then when you hover over a grid, its plane highlights as a blue planar vertical plane. And if you select the grid, in canvas control and its properties will display in the properties palette. And in a 3D view, you can by elements, category, filter, or by using the visibility graphic overrides dialog. You can also display grids using half tone. You can copy, cut, paste, and delete grids from the model. You can also snap to grids when placing other elements. And you can change grid instance and type properties. And if you want to hide a part of your model, you can create a 3D section box. And as you can see, the grid lines they do not extend beyond the bonding box, making it easier uh, to navigate this portion of your model. That's a nice feature. I think this next one uh, will really appeal to the architects in the audience. Uh, tell us about this wall display enhancement. Yes. So uh, in past releases, it was time consuming, you know, to hide the non-core layers of walls on plan views. And Revit 2022 introduces a new parameter, parameter to help you display only the wall core layers quickly and easily. So in the visibility graphic dialog box, you can unselect the new non-core layers option, which is available under walls, to display a simplified representation of walls in your 2D views. And wall layers, which are located between the core boundaries of the wall assembly, will remain visible. So this feature improves your productivity by helping you uh, quickly create easy and views in Revit. Yeah, it's simple but powerful. Uh, speaking of which, let's round out our list of features today with perhaps the most highly rated feature by our customers, phase parameters in view filters. Yes, Revit 2022 makes it possible to use phases in view filters. So let's see it in action. So one of the most efficient ways to control the visibility and the color of elements is to use view filters. And Revit 2022 introduces new filter rules, phase created and phase demolished to help manage the display of phases in your project. So this makes it easier to locate elements and understand their phases in your model. So take advantage of phase parameters in view filters in Revit 2022. Awesome job, thank you, Philippe and team. Uh, we've just covered many of the features for documentation efficiency. We won't have time to get into developer tools today, but it's a lot. We're talking you know, 67 new Dynamo nodes for coders, as well as new APIs for sketching, viewport labels, color fills, and more. Thank you all so much for joining us for this quick sprint through highlights of Revit 2022. Uh, we have time for a few questions now. I'll ask our host, David, to launch one more polling question and leave that up for the audience while we proceed. Um, and with that, I'll open up the floor to our Q&A panel. David, uh, take it away. 
Yeah, thanks, Aaron and team. And, and great run through. There was so much in this release um, and a lot that is really made for everyone. So we spent a lot of time on documentation efficiency and really getting um, what our customers have been requesting on Revit Ideas. So um, do take a look at the Revit blog for uh, an overview uh, that goes a little bit deeper than, than we've gone today or maybe a little bit broader than we've gone today. Um, and then also check out the release notes um, on the Autodesk Knowledge Network. And those links are, are coming up in the chat. Um, so on to questions. Uh, we have a lot of questions uh, sort of specific to how people are using Revit um, and, and specific to the, their, their workflows. Um, I'm not sure we can get to all of those, but why don't we start with one about the, um, the PDF exporter. And specifically, there's a question around, uh, are you able to put sheets in order in the PDF exporter? And I, I think, Ali, you had, a, you had a take on this, right? So could, could I pass it over to you, Ali, for that question? Sorry, David, can you repeat the question one more time? Sure. The question is, can you put sheets in order in the PDF exporter? Um, so you can, you, there is a, you can set up a way that you can import uh, the, the naming nomenclature, but from the, uh, the, the sheet set, you can, you can, um, you rely on Revit to, to, uh, to um, sort that list. Got it. Thank you for that, Ali. Um, I'm noticing that there are a lot of a lot of when questions, and so I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of our public roadmap, uh, which is the best way to take a look at what's in development. Um, and and you can go over to our Trello board. I'm going to post that into the uh, the chat here. Uh, it's see what's there for our, our various disciplines: architecture, MEP, structures, um, and and have a look and, and bookmark that so you can come back to it. Um, another question here, uh, this one maybe uh, we can put to, to Scott if that would work or maybe to Harlan, but if plan views are set to only display the wall core, will AutoCAD exports likewise show only the core? But I just looked at that question and actually just pasted it in a behind the scenes to Harlan to verify to make sure I was getting the right answer. Harlan, uh, can you help me out with that one? <laughs> Yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, it, it, for that particular plan view, if you're exporting a plan view, it'll export whatever is visible. So if you, for those plan views, it'll export with the, you know, those layers shown, basically. Great. Thank you for that, Harlan and Scott. Um, so I just put those links into the chat. Uh, so Revit Public Roadmap, and then we are also hosting a live Ask Me Anything on May the 4th with our Revit product managers. So a lot of the questions you've been putting forward in terms of future uh, future functions, future operability, that this that would be the moment to, to ask those. So go ahead and set a reminder. It's on our YouTube channel. I've put the link into the chat. Um, let's see what else we could get to. David, I'll tell you, like reading through this, sorry guys, there's a ton of questions. Obviously we're, we're frantically going through them, trying to answer them the best we can. A lot of them are kind of future forward thinking, asking when's this gonna happen questions. So please make sure you grab that link for the, uh, the Revit roadmap. It's a Trello board. There's a lot of great information there for sure to answer a lot of your kind of forward thinking questions. Uh, one of the question that, uh, questions that's close to my heart is around IFC, um, and there was a question around uh, IFC import. Um, I do know that next in, next in line and on the roadmap for us is uh, the MEP export. So we had architecture and structural certification with this release, and then MEP is, is on the roadmap for something that we will get to next. Let's see, any other questions to get to? Um, <clears throat> David, where, where exactly did you post the Revit roadmap Trello links? Uh, there's a few oh, asking that they don't see it. Oh, okay. That was put into the chat. Okay. The chat and itself, not the Q&A panel, guys. The chat down at the bottom of Zoom. I, I see it was placed in the chat, but just to the panelists, David. So I'll, I'll, oh, okay. I'll, I'll grab it and reshare it to the crowd. There we go. Thank we'll you. Thank you, everybody.
there was a question about the availability of this recording afterwards. Yes, you will you will be getting a recording of this of this webinar afterwards. Um, just looking back. It's another question here, and I'm not sure the answer, so this may go out to Harlan or others. The um, does the PDF exporter create layers that can be turned on and off in the PDF file, similar to AutoCAD layers in a PDF? Is that available with our new PDF writer in Revit? Pretty sure the answer to that is no, it does not. It does have some intelligence built in though. I know other PDF writers do this, but coming directly from Revit with our own PDF writer, and I think this was mentioned, all of the callouts, sections, details, et cetera, et cetera, all get written out as links into that PDF file. Yep. Yeah, a PDF export is very much uh, like so, sort of similar to printing you know, um, and kind of gives you similar results, but it doesn't include hyperlinking, which we've actually done for a while with PDF support, even in previous versions. Yeah. I would also uh, point out to everybody, when you do get into 2022 and you want to go make that PDF and you're going to go to the print menu and it's not going to be there, <laughs> it's no longer under print. Make sure you look under file export to find the, the PDF tool that's uh, included in 2022. Yeah, thank you for that, Scott. Um, sure. it, I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, a question back to our, our panel, um, wondering if there are any popular or burning questions that you that you all are seeing that you'd like to bring up. Um, you know, we've got, we've got architecture, we've got structure, we've got MEP, any, anything specific that you're seeing in the questions or any other high points that we haven't covered yet um, that you would like to address. And I'm, I'm scrolling like crazy trying to find this. I don't know if this was addressed. There was, there was one question that came up. So since we have the multi leader capability now where you can add new hosts and have a tag with multi leaders, there was a question if this works for keynotes, Harlan, I may have to throw that one yep. over you. Does it? It works for keynotes as well. Okay. It does. I haven't so tested it, yet. So yeah, it works pretty much on any on any uh, tag type you can think of. Great. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, there's uh, thanks. We appreciate all the comments. There's a lot of things in the in our Q and A that are just like, hey, this is great. <laughs> Not so much a question. So we we appreciate all of those comments as well. Just makes it right now. There's 105 open things that we're trying to, to pour through to the questions answered here. So. Uh, I saw one here uh, around API. So uh, API support for PDF export, Harlan, is that something that we have for this release? Yes. So we absolutely have API support for PDF export. There was also a question in here about new categories. Um, I don't know if you guys covered that. I don't remember. There are like a number of new categories added to Revit. Um, things like hardscape and signage and vertical circulation. Um, and you can also use generic uh, modeling. So you can take like the generic model family template and change its category to those new categories. You know, yeah, we selectively cut out some some of the features we covered today just for for brevity, but yeah, that's that's absolutely there. And uh, well, let's let's look at that, David. Um, I was going to say one of one of the things we didn't cover was the um, ISO revision numbering. Um, numbering. Oh, we did. Oh, yeah, we did cover that. Cesar spoke about that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not just for that purpose, but that is a standard that now it supports as well. something interesting. So uh, this person's assuming that we can snap or align the section box to the grids that are now available in 3D views. Is that, can you actually do that? Can you snap the sides of the section box to those 3D grids? No, that's not, we didn't make any changes to how section boxes and uh, okay. snap to grids. All right. Let's see, you're just scrolling through here. For the audience, if you if you saw what the group of us collectively are trying to do to go through all your questions, I know there's a ton and a lot of it hasn't gotten answered yet. We're trying to do this the best we can. There's just tons and tons of information to scroll through to and then read to try to figure out, uh, you know, what might be best to answer live on air here. 
I've seen a couple of questions about Revit and its ability to export into Excel. Uh, I think um, I answered some of those, but I just want to bring it up in here. I think um, Dynamo is a great tool that you can utilize in there that gives you a lot of um, you, um, capabilities and, and, and options. Uh, so I recommend taking a look at that. And I think in some of the questions, I, I posted a link to the primer as well, if you want to know how to get that done. Uh, there's a question here that uh, I, maybe we can answer. This is from uh, Christopher. It's about generic model families. Can rebar families be nested inside the generic model families? So all the new rebar tools, is that a capability? No, still not yet. Not yet. Not into generic. Okay. Is that something they should look out to that Trello board for? Come back. Uh, not sure if it's on the roadmap. A question about um, load Autodesk families here. So uh, is there a specific key to use for selecting multiple families? Um, oh, and I'm sorry, the question just jumped off the screen. Uh, or, or will there be checkboxes in, in future versions? So we released uh, load Autodesk family as a um, technology preview uh, back with 2021.1. .1. Uh, curious, Harlan, if you know there's more, more kind of development around um, sort of the ability to load from the cloud? Uh, yeah, there's stuff you can look at our roadmap for where we're going there. Um, and right now, though, you can't multi-select. So there's no special hidden key to multi-select in Lodato's family. It's only one at a time. Here's a question around splitting schedules from Katrina. After splitting a schedule and adjusting, can it be reverted back to be evenly split? Anyone, anyone know that one? Uh, um, kind of following, but I think basically you're wondering if you can like change how it's split afterwards. The only way to do that is to delete the splits and then resplit the schedule. There's no like merging things back together again, really, if you want to change how it's split up. It's so quick though. It's still fast. <laughs> it's not a, not a major setback yet. Here's something really cool about the, the splitting schedules across sheets is the way that it works is, is really nice, especially for those that are the, the, the BIM manager types that have maybe a little OCD and want to make sure those schedules are at the same spot on all the sheets. You place the first part of the split schedule on the sheet you uh, have identified, and then when you go to the next sheet, it's already there. The next column is already there in the exact same position and so on. So if you split that across two sheets or four sheets or ten sheets, uh, it will always be in that same position. And then if you adjust the kind of home screen, the first one, it uh, um, by you know grip petting it, it will then readjust the length of the other schedules and the other views. Let's see, uh, maybe one more question. Um, let's see, any anything come to mind from our panel as we've been moving through here? Anything that you would flag or? Even any concluding remarks? Uh, just one thing I'll, I'll say real quick, if you guys don't mind. Um, you know, the lot of good, you know, comments and questions about functionality, like not in, is this coming? Um, go to Revit Ideas if you haven't yet either. We have our roadmap, but if you actually have a good idea, you want to submit something, want to weigh in to one of the topics we have, we have a, it's called Revit Ideas, autodesk.com slash Revit Ideas. You can submit and vote on suggestions. We're always looking for feedback. Um, and so if there's something here that you know we haven't touched on, you don't see map, you don't see, go there, look for it, and add your comments. That would be great. I'm going to add that into the chat here. Um, well, with that, uh, I believe we are at time. I really want to thank uh, our panel for taking us through the highlights of Revit 2022. And I want to thank all of you for uh, at attending and, and asking your questions. And, uh, you know, so many questions, so many we didn't get to, uh, but a lot for us to digest and, and follow up on. Um, so without further ado, uh, go to the roadmap. Uh, go to our Trello board, check out those links, go to the Revit blog, um, and check out the other webinars that we have uh, scheduled for this year uh, as part of the AC Collection Essentials uh, series. And with that, uh, I thank you all for, for joining us, and uh, we will see you around.
Thanks, everyone.